Photoshop sucks at HDR. Well, Photoshop doesn't really suck at HDR anymore. Photoshop used to be really, really bad at HDR. In fact, you would see a lot of this kind of stuff. You would see a lot of that kind of HDR in general. Maybe people fail at HDR. This HDR is really, really bad. We're going to talk about creating this HDR right here, which is much more cinematic and actually can lead to creating this HDR, which as you can see, is much, much better. Stick around. For just a quick 30 seconds or so before we jump into the actual meat of the tutorial, let's talk about HDR and what it can do for you and what it is. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. So HDR photos are these photos where you have tons of detail in the shadows and tons of detail in the highlights. They have a very high dynamic range. You guessed it. Um, a lot of HDR imaging that you're going to see or maybe you have seen looks something like this. Maybe not quite this extreme, but a lot of haloing and just general ugliness. It gives HDR a really bad name. It's not the correct way to use HDR. Let's get rid of that. We're going to begin with essentially this image where we actually have some detail in the shadow but nothing in the highlights um, and we're going to turn it into this. Um, now if you haven't shot raw images and you don't know how to shoot HDR there's tons of tutorials out there on how to shoot HDR but more importantly for this tutorial you can download these battleship files. There's three raw images over at tutvid.com. I've got a link in the description of this video if you're watching this on YouTube or elsewhere um, but over at tutvid.com you can get the files and download them and follow along so we can create this image right here. Now, let's go get started over in uh, the bridge. So I'm just gonna close these two files because I don't really need them open. Let's open up the bridge. And now, as you can see in the bridge, I have these three files, Battleship 1, 2, and 3. These are going to be our HDR images. Now, if you're not using Adobe Bridge, don't worry. We're gonna actually command or launch this HDR script action thing from Photoshop. We're gonna go File, Automate, and Merge to HDR Pro. Now, beware, this may take a little bit of time depending on how fast or slow your computer is, so just be aware that we're going to go browse and I'm going to choose battleship one, two, three and hit OK. Now that I've done that, the files are in here. I'm going to leave this ticked on attempt to automatically align source images. It's going to take just a little longer to align them, but just in case they're off, I was shooting on a tripod, which is generally a good rule when you're shooting HDR. Hit OK and Photoshop is going to do its thing. And boom, what's going to pop up is the merged HDR Pro dialog, as you can see up here. Now, typically you would have worked in probably 16-bit mode or 8-bit mode in an older version of Photoshop. You're, you would still be generating this 32-bit image, but you'd have something like this, and you can increase radius or strength or detail, and you could get all kinds of disgustingness like that. We don't want that. We want to stick with 32-bit mode. It really gives us kind of this just very low contrast flat image with a ton of detail. Look at the sky. So much more detail is brought back in the sky. We still have detail in the foreground. And the importance of a 32-bit image, 32-bit basically, without getting into the math of what makes a 32-bit image, it basically means you can brighten the highlight or brighten the shadows and darken the highlights a whole heck of a lot without losing, uh, like without your file defragmenting and falling to pieces and getting all noisy and color banding and losing using sharpness and things like that. It gives you a ton of flexibility when it comes to this right here, toning in Camera Raw. So we're going to take this into Camera Raw in just a second, and we're going to add color, and we're going to boost contrast, and we're going to boost light in the shadows, and take some light out of the highlights, and just make everything just how we want it to be. As I say, doing HDR the right way. So we're going to leave that checked on, complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. And sure enough, the button here is tone in ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. We're going to hit that and it's just going to take a second. It's going to create the HDR file, bring it into Photoshop, convert it to a smart object and apply the Camera Raw smart filter to our smart object. So that's exactly what it's doing right now. And we'll be able to go in after Camera Raw and take out, you can see some of these blemishes here. There were spots on my sensor, things of that nature. We'll be able to clean all that up. And here we have it, the Camera Raw Editor. I'm just going to hit the letter F to bring it up to full screen. And let's begin by just doing some of the basics. So let's boost shadows and blacks to 100% right off the bat. So we're just going to boost them, boost them right up. It's taken a bunch of contrast out of the image. Don't worry about that right now. We're also going to reduce highlights, maybe make them like negative 40 or 50. Let's try negative 50. Uh, I'm going to go negative 50 on the highlights and the whites, by the way. I should have mentioned that. Um, and we're also going to 
drag the contrast slider up to maybe about 50% or, or plus 50, I should say, not really 50%, plus 50 for now. We're gonna throw a little bit of clarity in there. Let's go like plus five. And I want to punch a bit of vibrance into there. So let's go like 40 on the vibrance. It's just gonna immediately add a bunch of color. All right, now what we're going to do is wor worry about the color. So the temperature, let's boost it about 1,000 Kelvins to 6,000 Kelvin. Whoop, it's telling me two to 5,000. I entered 6,000. There we go, that looks good. Um, and then tint, we're gonna make that plus 40. So we're just gonna give it a nice, like, I don't know, rich, glowing sunset kind of color. Orange and this reddish magenta color mixed together uh, gives us a really nice color. Now we're gonna move over to the S curve or the tone curve. And you can see sometimes camera raw is gonna glitch out like this. You can just go back and forth sometimes and uh, it'll just refresh or reload the image the way it's supposed to be. So let's worry about the tone curve. Now, whoop, didn't want to zoom in. Now here on the tone curve, we wanna do a couple things. We want to go ahead and boost the black point just a little bit and reduce the white point just a little bit. Again, we're killing off some of the contrast, don't worry about that. And then I'm gonna place a point somewhere right around here, and we're just gonna pull down the darkness of the image, or make it make the darks in the image, the you know the the dark two, the darker two thirds of the image a little bit darker. I raise the black point a little bit too much to make it a little bit darker. Something like so, that looks good. I think I reduced the black point just a touch too much. All right, now the image looks like it has too much yellow and too much green in it. So we're gonna come over here to the color channels and we're gonna go to the red channel first as I did. I'm gonna place a point up here and just pull some red into the highlights. Not too much, just a, a few drips of red. Then we're gonna go down to green and the opposite of green is magenta. I don't wanna add green, that's gonna look bad. I don't wanna add too much magenta though because that's explosive. Um, we're just gonna add a very little bit of magenta into the darker regions of the image. This is the darker bit of our image over here is the brighter bits of our image. So if we pull up on this, you see how we're adding a lot of green to the sky and the highlights, but we can still see magenta on the hull of the ship. It's because that's the darker area. But we only wanna add some magenta to the darker areas of the image. Then we're gonna go to the blue channel. And here, I wanna actually add some blue to the highlights. I feel like it's gonna enrich the uh, sunset a little bit. And then I'm gonna add some yellow to the shadowy parts of the image, just a little bit. If you pull too much yellow into an image, it really starts to look mucky and like it takes on like this vomit green kind of color. Really not the greatest looking thing uh, out there. So there we go. We did some stuff with the curves adjustment here in Camera Raw. Now we're gonna jump over to split toning. And what I wanna do with split toning is Add some orange to the highlights, add some of this, you know, rich magenta pink to the shadows. So let's go about, I don't know, 40, 45 on the hue for highlights and then throw about 10 in saturation uh, into the highlights. And then over here on shadows, we're gonna go, I don't know, let's try around 340 or so and also about 10 in saturation. Um, we can hit the letter, well, the letter P is gonna show us a complete before and after. So we're making some good progress. We're adding a lot of great color and richness uh, to the photo. That looks really, really good. Um, now let's talk about some sharpening and some t general tweaking of the image just to really pull it in and really sight this in the way we want it. Now, if you have a newer version of Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, but we're working in Camera Raw now, you have the dehaze option. We're gonna boost dehaze uh, to about plus, I don't know, plus 20 or so. If we go too much higher, it's gonna add all this crazy blue to the sky and just because a really bad clarity adjustment. We're gonna go about plus 20 on the dehaze. And we actually do have some vignetting. I'm not gonna do post-crop vignetting though. Post-crop vignetting can be a little funky. Let's go over here to lens correction and try messing around with this vignetting here. There we go, something like that looks a lot better. We give it a little bit too much vignetting and then just reduce the midpoint a little bit to kind of fade it into the image a little more naturally. That looks good, about 41 and 25 for amount of vignetting and the midpoint. Um, but do what looks good. If you're not following along with this image and you got another image, do what looks good in that image. Um, and of course, last but not least, let's go ahead over to the uh, sharpening here and boost the sharpening. Actually, what I like to do with sharpening, double click on the zoom tool. It's gonna zoom you into 100%. And I'm just looking for like critical details. You can see we actually we are picking up some noise. There is a, a noise pattern on a lot of the big areas of color. So let's try doing a little luminance noise reduction, maybe color noise reduction. Nope, we're just gonna stick with luminance uh, noise reduction. When you reduce noise, you also reduce detail. So with that in mind, we're gonna boost the radius of our sharpening a little bit and also increase the sharpening. Um, yeah, I mean, something around 115 actually looks really good with a radius of probably between 1 and 1.5. That looks good. Luminous noise reduction, about 20 uh, there on that slider. All right, great. This looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe we'll come back here into exposure and just darken it a little bit to 
down to like negative 20, negative 25. Maybe we'll go to negative 20, negative 0.20, I should say. Um, and then we're going to hit OK. And now it's just going to, as you see, apply the camera raw filter that we just created and generated, boom, to that HDR image, that 32-bit HDR image. See up there, RGB with 32-bit. Um, so I can actually shut that filter off and there's what we entered Photoshop with, turn it on and here's what we've got. We can also do things like double click here on these sliders and well, it's going to open up the camera raw filter. I really probably shouldn't do that because it's going to take a second, um, but it'll open the camera raw filter back up. Oh, I'm sorry. This is going to open up blending options. What am I thinking? If you double click camera raw filter, it opens the camera raw filter back up. But the cool thing about blending options actually since we're here is we could reduce the opacity of this effect if we decided it's just too much. You can see we can just set it to about 75% if we like and maybe dial in exactly what we want. I don't want to do that. We're going to ride with 100% for now. And since we've messed around with that, we probably should just talk about these blemishes, getting rid of a couple of these dots. Super easy to do. Add a new layer. You can name the layer whatever you want. Blemishes. Uh, grab the healing brush tool. That's my favorite for this kind of thing. Set the sample to current and below. Oh, we got to define a point, of course. Let's actually zoom in on some of these blemishes. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and just define a point and go ahead and paint but look at this this is really important stuff could not use the healing brush because it does not work with 32 bit per channel images it's telling me to convert it to an 8 or 16 bit per channel image in order to edit the reason this is a big deal is because with a 32 bit image there's tons of stuff you can't do look at this if i come over here to image adjustments we can't use curves there's all kinds of stuff that we can't do to this big 32 bit image heck we can't even save this out as a JPEG. We have to save it as like a PSD or a .hdr or a TIFF file or a few other file formats. Um, so we need to make some kind of conversion with our image before we can even begin to heal these. And in fact, before we can even save it, I'm going to get rid of the blemishes layer. Here's how we're going to make this conversion. Basically, what we need to do is go image mode and set it to 16 bits per channel. The problem is if we do this, we lose so much flexibility going from 32 bits back to 16 bits that it's going to really mess up the integrity of your image. It's going to look like a darkened, uh, not like it does now. It's not going to look all that great. Here's how I have found I preserve a lot of the integrity of the image that I see now. I create a new layer and I merge this layer or this these two layers to a new layer so it's control shift alt e or command shift option e on the mac basically it's going to take the bottom layer and flatten it into that new layer we just created you see that so we've got our flattened image and then this image down here with a live camera raw edit being applied to it now that we've done that and sort of flattened this layer we can go image mode 16 bits per channel and photoshop's gonna say hey would you like to merge everything or don't merge i'm gonna say don't merge because i want to preserve as much editability as i can it says hey you got some smart filters going on blah 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 who cares hit okay and it's going to do this whole process of converting color and watch carefully you can see the image actually did lose just a blip of contrast just a little bit but the way our flattened image has changed is nothing compared to the way our original image changed. Look at this. We've lost a ton of contrast. We're losing some of the luster in the color. There is a, a certain uh, depth and appeal to this image, but it definitely has changed a whole lot. So we obviously don't want that. We like our flattened image. In fact, something you could do is let's say you, you kind of like this image and you kind of like this image on top. You can just drag this image up to the top and reduce the opacity a bit and kind of blend the two together. Just kind of something like that. So there was the image we brought out of Camera Raw. Here's like a blended image. I actually kind of like that. Let's roll with that. Now that we've done that, now we can create our new layer as we started to do before. And we can grab our healing brush tool. We're going to choose to sample from current and below. Of course, we're going to zoom in. And I'm going to hold down my alt or option key to sample. And I can paint over any of these blemishes. Don't mind these like white blocks of like area that seem to be difficult for Photoshop to render. That just happens with these larger images. Um, there you go. Paint that. I believe that's Adobe's issue and not mine. So we've got this little blemish down here on the water. So we're going to try to line that up, make it look good. All right. So those look like some of the major blemishes. Maybe there's one there and one there and my sensor was filthy the day that I shot this um, alright great so we're just gonna I don't know grab any little blemishes that we notice on the way out the door uh, that looks pretty good so as you can see we have taken a kind of eh looking image with not much detail at all in a sky that was totally blown out and we've created what's a what I think is a pretty darn good looking HDR image high dynamic range. We've got great detail in the shadow, great detail in the highlights, 
and we have we have actually preserved a bit of editability. I mean, we still do have access to our camera raw filter. Um, what I would do, and what maybe you should think about doing, is before you convert down to a 16-bit image. Actually, let me go back over here to uh, the bridge. I saved a .psd of the other image that I was working on as a 32-bit HDR working file in case I ever had to go back and edit that HDR. Um, I have that. 32-bit image, but obviously I can't save a JPEG from this image. I can only save a JPEG out when, once I convert this to 16 bits, but I always make sure that I save a copy at 32-bit just so I have it. Um, and it's not even a huge file. Um, so there we go. We've created an HDR image, an HDR image done the right way. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutford.com. Thanks for watching. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up. And going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.